Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can save and load data and information via PlayerPrefs in Unity. So what is a PlayerPref? A PlayerPref is a way of saving any information, whether it be an integer, a string, a float, you can save that to Unity's internal memory and then reload that at a later date even after the game has stopped playing and load it in. Easy. So it stores it to Unity's internal memory, no problem. So it's all done via scripting. So let's right click, create C sharp script, and let's call this prefs scripty. Why not? So what the idea of what I'm going to do in this episode is save the information of where our player is. So it's X position, Y position, Z position, and we're going to load it whenever we reload the game. So I'm going to do this all kind of real time, but you don't necessarily have to do it. You could have a trigger saving information, but I may do that as the example anyway. So firstly, let's get rid of the annotations. We don't need it. And let's set our first variable as the player. Public game object the player semicolon. Next, we'll do the X position, Z position, Y position. So X pause semicolon. Oops. That'll be a float, my apologies. X, pause, semicolon. Public, float, Y, pause, semicolon. And finally, public, float, Z, pause, semicolon. Now, what we need to do is we need to start our player in the position he currently is. So in this case, he's currently set as 165, 40, 54. The reason being is that if you try loading a player pref when it hasn't existed previously, it will just come return zero, it will turn null, nothing. So you would start at zero, zero, zero. So we need to start, firstly, the player, if I spell it right, dot transform dot position equals new vector three, and in brackets we have 154, 40 and 54, close bracket, semicolon, and let's spell position correctly. So we're going to start at this position at all times. But what we do need to occur is that we need to make X pos, Y pos, Z pos equal to the position where the player currently is. So we need to do that in void update. X pos equals the player dot transform dot position dot x and then we can do the same for y and z so we can literally copy that line of code twice change the y and to z and again y and to z and save that script so we've got our routine in place here but now we need to use the play pref so i did say i was going to use a trigger as an example but i'll also use real time at the end of this tutorial as well so we're going to have a cube, which will be a trigger. So let's create a new method and call it void on trigger enter. And it doesn't need to be private. That's fine. And what we need to do is set the data. So we use the term set float because we're using a float. If we were using an integer, it would be set integer. So it's player prefs dot set float and in brackets and quotes the name the actual physical name of what you want the player pref to be called so let's call it x position in quotes comma and then the value of what you want that player pref to be in our case it's going to be x pos so basically whenever we cross a trigger that this script is attached to we're going to save in our player pref this value. So we can copy that line of code and once again do the same for Y and Z. So Y position and Z position. So that should be Y pos and Z pos. And let's save that script. So we've got the idea of saving our data. So let's try and save this into our player prefs now. So let's go back to Unity. And we did do it via a trigger. So game object, once it thinks about it, a 3D object and a cube. So let's have this cube down by the beach. So let's have it all the way over here, about there. 
And let's expand it a little bit. So maybe five there. Bring it to about there. And then let's turn off the mesh renderer and set it to a trigger. And then attach our script to that cube and then attach our player to the player over here. So now what will happen is when we cross through this trigger, we will activate these here and we will save the position of our player pref. But we're going to load here no matter what because we've hard coded these numbers. So let's cross that trigger and set ourselves our player prefs. So all the way around here. And now, because I haven't ticked it is trigger, that's why that didn't work. So let's try that one again. Let's head around here through the trigger. Okay, so now we should have set our player prefs. And you would have seen here as we moved around that our X position, Y position, Z position was all changing. So we've crossed here and those positions will have saved. So now let's load those positions in. So we can do that by going X pause equals player prefs dot get float. So if it was an integer, it'd be get int. If it was a string, it'd be get string. And in brackets and quotes, you have to put this name here. Make sure you do type it exactly the same because even just one letter difference or one spelling mistake can make the biggest difference because it won't load this one here. It has to be identical. So quote, close bracket, semicolon. And then we can do the same again. Copy that for Y and Z. So Y pause. Z pos is equal to Y pos and Z pos. So we've loaded our player prefs, but we're still going to spawn at this point here. So let's change this to spawn our saved player pref position. So we change this to X pos, change this to Y pos, and change this to Z pos, and save. So now what will happen? is our player will spawn roughly here. So let's try it out. Perfect. So you can see at this point what's happening is even though our player has been at this position here, he's actually being instantly transformed over to where we saved our player pref. So we could, for example, if we moved this trigger over here into the water a little, press play, we'd still start here where we actually saved our data originally. But if we walk forward, recross that trigger and then restart our game, we will actually start where we saved. So guys, that is how you can save player prefs, at least via by a trigger in Unity. It's all about just saving your information and then retrieving your information using set and get. So guys, until next time, thank you very much for watching.